Hello and welcome to another edition of Father Dave's Prayer Chef Update for Friday, May 19th, 2023. Uh, special prayers today for uh, Kenneth Monroe, uh, parishioner, who passed away recently. His funeral will be uh, next Monday. Again, that's uh, Monroe spelled M-O-N-R-O-E. We have a couple different Ken Monroe, so make sure we have the right one there uh, to pray for. Uh, so please pray for the repose of his soul and the comfort and consolation for his family. It's, uh, uh, it's always a difficult time uh, to say uh, goodbye to those whom we love and to lift them up in, in the hope and promise of a new life in Christ. So please keep keep him in your prayers. Also a special uh, prayer for uh, Florence Roth, again a longtime parishioner, uh, recently uh, fell and, and uh, uh, she's doing okay, but uh, a little bruised up, so I ask for prayers for her. Also prayers uh, for my, my own mother, uh, Marianne Fleming, today's her birthday, and so happy birthday, Mom. <laughs> so I uh, thought I'd use the power of my pastorship to offer prayers, special prayers for my mom today. So uh, let's just continue to pray for one another. This weekend, uh, we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension, uh, properly the feast days on uh, this last Thursday, Ascension Thursday, uh, as it's more traditionally known uh, in our diocese, as in many in the United States, the feast day is uh, has been transitioned to um, to the following Sunday. So we ask a special prayer on the Feast of the Ascension. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, right before your ascension into heaven, you told your apostles to be witnesses to the ends of the earth upon receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. May we similarly be inspired to spread your gospel message in word and deed according to your will for all of us. And may we do so prudently and joyfully with your help, your guidance, and your grace. And remembering this glorious event, help us to seek what is above heaven, where you are seated at the right hand of God the Father. St. Pius X, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I really wanted to devote uh, most of today's uh, update to our big announcement. Uh, we've finally been able to officially announce now who the new uh, pastor and associate pastor or parochial vicar uh, properly understood um, who they are today. So um, we're uh, going to be sending uh, this out uh, through the uh, our uh, internet um, uh, messaging, <laughs> as well as we'll be announcing it in, in the weekend masses and have a, a bulletin insert in the parish weekly bulletin. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to announce that our new pastor who will be following me in July, uh, his first day will be July 13th, is Father Matthew Luft. Um, so a little bit about Father Matthew. He is a, a he's from our diocese originally. Um, uh, he grew up at St. Augustine Parish and um, went to grade school there and went to Dowling. Um, he did his college work at uh, uh, St. John University in Collegeville, Minnesota. Um, and uh, graduated from there, from college. Um, he is the uh, son of Dennis, Deacon Dennis and Sarah Luff. Uh, his mother Sarah died a, a little while ago, uh, but his dad, Deacon Dennis, is still active, um, retired but active, uh, so uh, he's doing well. Uh, Father Matthew originally was, uh, years ago, many years ago, was a seminary for the Diocese of Des Moines. Um, I have a kind of a link with him in that uh, one of my first assignments after being an associate pastor at St. Augustine uh, was I was vocation director for the diocese, and he was one of the seminarians under my care. Um, he had uh, uh, can, began his theological studies at Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C., and at that time he took a little time off from the seminary. He later went on to join the Benedictine community as a Benedictine monk and priest um, at uh, St. John's Abbey in um, Collegeville, Minnesota a very kind of world-renowned Benedictine community there, especially as they uh, focus on liturgy and prayer in a special way. And um, so anyway, so he uh, joined them in, uh, uh, began his process of uh, novitiate there in uh, 2000, um, and he took the name um, Matthew. Uh, his given birth name was Dennis. As religious often do, they uh, take a new name uh, to show that transition into a consecrated life. Uh, he has since uh, legally changed his name uh, from Dennis to Matthew. His full legal name now is uh, Father Matthew Dennis Luft. 
is his proper name and, and legal name. Uh, he made his first vows of profession on uh, 2001, and he was ordained a priest in 2005. So since ordination, Father Matthew is ministered at St. Boniface Parish in Cold Spring. Um, he was a parochial vicar there and later on became pastor. Uh, he's at Our Lady of Mercy in Potomac, Maryland, uh, doing weekend assistance when he was studying and doing his uh, uh, extended graduate work there. Saints Peter and Paul, uh, St. James of uh, Jacob's Prairie, and uh, Mary of the Immaculate Conception Parish. So he's uh, been pastoring multiple parishes uh, in recent years. Um, and so he's, uh, and some of which have had schools as well. So he's a, an experienced pastor, both with parishes and schools. Uh, up in the uh, Diocese of St. Cloud is where most of those parishes were. That's the same diocese where the Abbey's located. And many of the monks over the years have served in some of the diocesan parishes. Father Matthew earned his uh, academic degrees, as I mentioned, at St. John's University in Collegeville. Um, and uh, he got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree there in education. And at Catholic University, uh, he got a PhD in, in 2014 uh, related to liturgy. So uh, he's a very brilliant young man, uh, but a very humble and wonderful uh, uh, good priest. Um, he does speak Spanish as well. Um, uh, tying into that, he spent a little time uh, last fall. Uh, he actually lived here in one of our houses for just a, a short period of time, uh, taking a little sabbatical time and doing some pastoral planning and study. And uh, he also walked the Camino del Santiago in Spain. That's the long uh, kind of pilgrimage hike across northern Spain. Uh, so he made that trek as well as part of his sabbatical at that time. Father Matthew is exploring uh, becoming a priest for the Diocese of Des Moines, and he'll again be assigned here at St. Pius X uh, as canonical administrator beginning July 13th is his first official day. Um, he has uh, two Springer Spaniels. So I had one dog, Snoopy. He has two dogs, uh, Springer Spaniels. One's a, a black and white uh, Spaniel named Toby, and uh, Mickey is a lemon and white uh, Springer Spaniel. So those uh, walking with them, and uh, so he'll get a lot of exercise with, with the two dogs in tow. He's excited to uh, uh, kind of see what Central Iowa has to offer. Again, you know, he's from the Des Moines area originally, again, but gone for a number of years, so I know he's very excited about coming uh, back to the Des Moines area. And I'm very excited about having him here at St. Pius. He's a real catch. We're very lucky to have him. Um, part of the, um, the delay in announcing his, uh, his appointment was the fact that because he's involved with the Benedictine community, there's some things that have to happen in order to make that transfer possible. So all that's underway now, so we're able to announce. So uh, that's who's following me. Uh, and following Father Brad, uh, Father Brad Roby will be Father Daniel Adige. Father Daniel uh, actually is currently living in one of our houses across the street. Um, he is, uh, Father Daniel is a priest from Ghana in West Africa, and uh, he's the uh, second of four children. He has three brothers, uh, three sisters and a brother. Uh, he grew up in a small farming community, uh, and uh, uh, his, he notes that he walked to uh, um, with other Catholics for eight miles to attend Mass at the nearby village every Sunday. So, you know, we get thinking we're inconvenienced by having to, you know, get up and go to Mass uh, when it's, you know, five minutes away by car. Uh, he walked eight miles every week, uh, one way, <laughs> uh, to, to go to church. So uh, he has a wonderful experience. His vocation began early in his life as a young, a young student in, in grade school, and he uh, was very conscious of that even as a young man. And then as he moved into his high school education years, he continued to uh, pursue that uh, vocation. He moved into a, a high school seminary and then a college seminary eventually, and um, uh, where he did his, uh, his schoolwork. Um, he was ordained a priest uh, uh, for the Diocese of uh, Secondi Tartorati. I hope I pronounced that somewhat closely. Uh, he was ordained a priest on October 6, 2012. So uh, he's been ordained a little over 10 years now. Um, after ordination, he served at local parishes there uh, in his home diocese. And in 2015, uh, his bishop sent him to Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, to uh, Duquesne University, or to pursue a master's degree of theology. And so he returned to Ghana after completion of that in 2017. And he again served the diocese locally and uh, 
these bishops sent him back to the university here in the United States to do a doctoral degree in systematic theology. People have asked what systematic theology. Systematic theology seeks to take kind of all the disciplines of, of, of theology, all the different areas and study of theology, and putting them together in a cohesive way of understanding our doctrines and traditions using scripture, tradition, the teachings of the church, the teachings of the church fathers, um, uh, just kind of a comprehensive study, an overview of, of, of our basic understanding of, of, of all things theology, all things that we speak of in terms of God and the church and our faith. So he's a, a very sharp young man, and he just finished his doctoral degree, so we uh, give him congratulations on that wonderful achievement. And um, so again, he moved to the diocese, back to the diocese here in, um, I would have been last November, it's when he moved into our house across the street. Uh, up to this point, he's been serving as um, uh, assisting, uh, doing offer pastoral assistance at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in West Des Moines, St. Joseph's on the east side, and St. Teresa's here uh, in the central Des Moines area. Uh, again, coming July 13th, he will be uh, assigned here as the full-time parochial vicar or pastoral uh, or associate pastor here at St. Pius. So uh, just saying to Father Daniel and all of his degree work, he holds bachelor, uh, bachelor's degree in the study of religions and sociology, um, and a bachelor's degree in sacred theology, and a postgraduate diploma in education from the University of Cape Coast, in, uh, and a master's degree in theology, and a PhD in systematic theology from Duquesne University in, in Pennsylvania. Um, I joked with our staff between our pastor and our new parochial vicar that the IQ quotient of your uh, clergy here at St. Pius has gone up immensely. <laughs> They're both very bright men, uh, but both very wonderful, loving, and humble men. Uh, I'm so excited for both of them. That they'll be able to serve our community. I'm very excited to be able to announce it and uh, let that be known publicly. And so, yes, so those are our two priests, Father Matthew Luck, Father Annual Adije, and uh, again, we're just so happy to have them on board. I know you're going to make them feel welcome. Um, uh, Father Matthew will be paying a visit here uh, just very briefly uh, uh, this week, just to kind of stop in and meet some of the staff. He's visiting family, so that's kind of the part of his intention of coming back to the Boyne area. Uh, but he'll uh, be able to kind of give him a quick tour of the facility and uh, kind of an overview of things. So I know he's looking forward to it. It's a lot of transition for him. Please pray for him. Uh, in particular, um, uh, uh, not only is he physically moving, but he's transitioning from kind of a, a life of a, a Benedictine monk and priest, um, although he's been in parish ministry, uh, to a whole new diocese and a whole new experience down here in Des Moines. So it's a lot, a lot of transitioning. And um, uh, so please hold him up in prayer. Again, uh, uh, I know both uh, Father Matthew and Father Daniel would appreciate your prayers and your support. Uh, they're both, again, just delightful, delightful young men. I like to say young men now. I'm starting to feel like an old codger. <laughs> but uh, they are they are uh, someone young. I don't know their exact ages. Uh, I believe Father Matthew's probably in his late 40s. Um, uh, Father Daniel, uh, I really don't know his exact age. I presume he's in his uh, maybe early to mid 30s. But uh, I'll let them uh, share all that good information with you when they arrive. So yeah, so that's the big, big news for the day, announcing our new uh, pastor and associate pastor here at St. Pius. So it's a couple, as we do each week, little updates on our prayer stewardship. Uh, our um, uh, annual diocesan appeal, again, has continues to move forward. Uh, to date, we've had uh, 439 households who have made pledges or, or gifts toward the annual appeal. So that's up a, a bit from last week. So thank you. I uh, know we've still got a lot, of work to, a lot of work ahead. We usually, usually hit around 600, 650. Uh, households giving, so we got a little, little more work to do. Uh, um, but so far, we've collected about one hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars. We leaves us about just shy of forty thousand dollars left to uh, to to collect. So again, just ongoing support. And thank you for all those who have turned in your ADA pledges. Uh, again, we you can drop that in the mail. Um, we have a box in the gathering space. You can drop it in a, a big clear plastic box. It's uh, with the signs on it. We can put it in the collection box basket. So uh, we need to get that wrapped up. Like I said, it's, uh, it's something we have to, we are assessed by the diocese. We have to uh, make that ultimate payment. Our, our overall goal uh, for the ADA, our assessment is 
$216,000. So uh, again, we're getting close uh, or closer. So thank you and for your continued support. Um, capital campaign uh, uh, pledges keep uh, pledge payments keep rolling in. Thank you for your dedication to that. Bit by bit, we'll keep getting that paid down, and um, we'll make good uh, uh, make good on all of those financial obligations. For the Ignite campaign, again, um, we really have kind of wrapped, wrapped that up for almost for the whole part now. Um, I believe that to date we have uh, committed to the uh, pledge from our parish one million two hundred fifty five thousand um, dollars, more or less. And uh, again, which is I, uh, we're very happy with that. Our our goal was one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's about 500,000 short, but given everything we've been through, I'm very happy with that. Um, it uh, gets us a little over 70% of our goal. Um, now, if we were able to get to that 75%, then we get 15% of what we of what we bring in, uh, which could raise for us another um, good $150,000 or more. So uh, with that said, if anyone wants to make any special extra pledges or uh, Make any additions to your pledges, you can let us know that uh, or work through the diocese um, uh, on those pledge commitments. Um, again, we're so close to that. Um, we're uh, seeing whatever we can do, maybe the diocese, uh, the, the diocese had kind of set a, a limit of, we had to reach 75% of our goal, um, and we're just a few percentage points away from that. So um, bit by bit, uh, and it'll all be what God desires us to be. So thank you so much for your ongoing support. Um, we have a lot, again, continues to go on here in the parish in these uh, final weeks of May. Of course, we just celebrated uh, Mother's Day and, and um, our senior mass last week and uh, all sorts of things happening. Um, uh, so as we are set, uh, setting a time of transition for our students, we have high school graduation coming up this upcoming week, or high school, we have uh, grade school graduation, and <laughs> St. Pius grade school graduation this week, and uh, so please pray for our eighth graders as they finish their time here at St. Pius. Uh, so a lot going on. Um, also, a little quick reminder, last week we did have our baby bottle campaign. If you picked up an empty baby bottle to fill up with change, if you want to bring that back in uh, this weekend and the weekends ahead, you can do so. We'd love to, again, help support that wonderful effort of uh, supporting young uh, babies, uh, newly uh, young mothers and, and families are in need. So thank you for that support. In all these things, we give God thanks. Uh, as uh, Again, as we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension formally this weekend, we're mindful that while the Lord has uh, ascended to heaven, that he has promised us that gift of the Holy Spirit to remain with us and to empower us to continue to love God, to love others, to make disciples, and to restore all things in Christ. God bless you.